Hi everyone, it's Dr. Alicia. So today we'll be talking about personal statements. I have been on both sides of personal statements at this point, having written many, many personal statements for scholarships and getting into med school and residency. And I've also been on the receiving end of personal statements, having read probably over 400 personal statements in the last year. So today I'll be sharing with you my top tips for writing an excellent personal statement and a specific format you can follow that can make the task of starting out writing a personal statement feel less daunting. And I'll also be sharing with you my personal, personal statement that I found from when I wrote it back in 2014 that I have not really looked at since then. And I know the title of this video is called The Personal Statement That Got Me Into Stanford. And technically, yes, this is the personal st statement that I submitted that did help me get interviews. And eventually I matched at Stanford for residency in internal medicine. Most of the time though, personal statements really neither will greatly help you or hurt you. You know, they can hurt you if there is just a lot of grammatical errors and stories that might show like weird judgment or something. Um, and they can help you in that they can show the programs like your values, your future career goals, and that helps the program decide if you are a good fit for them based on their values. It is rare for a personal statement to truly be so life-changing, groundbreaking, that it makes you get an interview on its own merit alone, but I have seen it happen. Just a personal statement that shows such an extraordinary reflection on someone's life that a program director decides like, I have to meet this person. So the format that I recommend you follow is sticking to approximately four paragraphs that are each maybe about four to seven sentences long. You can sometimes have a fifth paragraph if you have so much to say in one of these paragraphs that it needs to be split into two paragraphs. But in general, I highly, highly recommend that you stick to approximately one page in ERAS. Um, you know, the reason for this is that if it looks like a little bit too short, like it's only half a page, then you might stand out for like not expressing yourself enough when you had the chance to. And then if it's too long, like personal statements that are two or three pages, program directors are probably just not going to read past like the first page and a paragraph. I recommend sticking to approximately a page if you must, maybe like a page and like a couple bonus lines if you really can't edit it down any further. The first paragraph is an intro to you, your background, and why you chose the career of medicine in general. So this is really a time for you to express your unique background, your unique characteristics and values. And I'll show you in my personal statement, which I'll share very soon, how I did that. The second paragraph is where you explain why you are choosing the specific specialty that you are applying to. Why do you have to be a neurosurgeon of, out of everything? Why are you choosing to be a psychiatrist, for example? And so the best way to back this up is with a lot of examples from your clinical rotations or from your own personal or family experiences with the healthcare system that can make a convincing case for why you are choosing this specialty. The third paragraph is where you can express what you've learned from another significant experience in your life. So this can be from volunteer experience or research experience, if you've done extensive amounts of volunteer or research work, and how you grew from those experiences and how they shaped you into who you are and the future doctor that you're going to be. It can be a chance to talk about more um, clinical examples and what you learned from that. Um, it can also be for people who have red flags on their application, such as failed step exams or courses that you had to remediate during medical school, this is where you would explain, you know, the circumstances around how you incurred those red flag situations and what you've learned to grow from them as well. And the final paragraph is where you talk about your career plans. This is where you talk about what you are looking for in a residency program, what you bring 
to any residency program that you go to and your future career goals as well. So you can be specific if you like to. For example, if you know that you want to be a cardiologist, your heart is absolutely set on that. You can mention that in this part of the personal statement. And the good thing is that it is not a binding statement. You know, just because you wrote you wanted to be a cardiologist did not mean that a few years later, you're absolutely compelled to have to apply for cardiology fellowship. So you're always allowed to change your mind. If you are not sure, it is absolutely okay to keep it pretty general. What programs are doing with this information is trying to figure out if you are a good fit for the program. And if you are, if there's a particular track in their program that you might be a better fit for. So for example, in internal medicine, there's oftentimes a few different tracks, including a primary care track for people who want to mostly go into outpatient medicine, and then also a categorical track for people who want to do inpatient medicine or who want to subspecialize in something like GI. So what you say here might help them decide if you are a good fit for the categorical versus the primary care track, for example. People oftentimes use this section as well to really personalize their personal statement and tailor it to a specific program that they're applying to. You can do this if you want for every single program you apply to, but it is very, very important that you not double check, but triple check that you are addressing it to the correct program. So if you're saying, you know, in the last sentence of your personal statement, I believe that John Hopkins is the best fit for me given, you know, this and this reason that you are sure that you're actually matching that in ERAS with your application for John Hopkins and not accidentally with like, you know, the University of Massachusetts or something. So making sure that, you know, if you're saying, um, you know, I'm looking for an academic program in an urban area that you're not sending that to a program that is in like rural Michigan and is a community program. So, um, you know, you, you can always take out those details that maybe don't match with a particular program that you're sending it to, but otherwise they might wonder why are you applying to us if you're looking for something like very different from what we offer. So next I'll offer some general tips to help you. So the first thing is that examples are everything and it is worthwhile to take time to really reflect to make sure that you have good anecdotes, good examples to share in your personal statement. You can say things like, I am excited to do medicine, but your examples are much more likely to give off that impression to someone in a way that is truly memorable. So people remember stories. Keep your personal statement positive. So oftentimes, you know, we're writing about personal difficulties, tragedies, obstacles. Keep the focus on how you grew from those experiences, how you overcame those obstacles. Don't be weird. So what I mean by this is that it is okay to be boring. I remember reading a personal statement from someone who started off talking about their bowel movements and poop. And it was honestly like a really hilarious personal statement, but it was not necessarily the tone that you want for something as serious as a you know, statement about your future career. And so you don't have to be entertaining. It's okay to be boring. People who write boring personal statements get plenty of interviews all the time. And in person, you know, during your interview, you then have the opportunity to show people that you are engaging, easy to talk to, not boring at all. You know, just be true to the experiences that you've had that have led you to choosing this career and the subspecialty that you want. Most importantly, grammar is everything. Grammar and spelling are so, so important. Make sure it is so spell checked, grammar checked, that it all looks really great from that perspective. Um, especially for IMGs, you know, having serious grammatical errors will possibly exclude you from an interview. Sometimes there can be personal statements are very unconventional 
non-traditional in the ways that they're formatted. Like I once read a personal statement that had like 20 paragraphs and each paragraph was only one to two sentences. So my recommendation is like, just keep it to like a very, very traditional format. This is not the time to like create new forms of literature. Just make it like a very simple, clear communication about your experiences and your goals. As an aside, oftentimes people will write about medicine using a metaphor, comparing it to playing basketball or to music. And that is okay to do, but make sure that you are still highlighting your own personal experiences because sometimes people can go so deep into this metaphor comparing being a doctor to being Kobe Bryant in the NBA that it, you can lose you know, who is the person writing this, what are their experiences besides that they are clearly a big basketball fan. Get examples of personal statements from friends and classmates that you know that matched well and try to get people who are the most nitpicky about grammar and spelling to read your personal statement. Anything that you talk about in your personal statement is fair game for someone to ask you about during the interview as well. There's like a patient example that you share in your personal statement, you know, be prepared to answer questions from the interviewer about like, oh, what happened to that patient or what else did you learn? So finally, I'm gonna show you my personal statement. So this is by no means perfect, um, but I'm being very honest and sharing basically exactly what I wrote, um, which I had not looked at since I wrote it at this point nine years ago. So yeah, let's take a look together. So I grew up in a crowded one bedroom San Francisco apartment I shared with four family members after we immigrated from Beijing. On the streets below me, I saw the double epidemics of methamphetamine and HIV agitating the streets of the Tenderloin District of the 1990s. With the daily scenes of deprivations of the elderly, the mentally ill, and the poor, these scenes of suffering cultivated in me a desire to create a place where every individual is cared for. Throughout college in Berkeley, I strived to fulfill this vision by serving as the coordinator of a homeless clinic held at a women's shelter and as an HIV test counselor and trainer of new counselors at a free clinic, both places that delivered healthcare as a way of arriving at human dignity. So I think, um, you know, in terms of like the objectives of that first paragraph where it's about an introduction and about um, sharing your background, a little bit of why you chose medicine. I think it does do that. You know, it expresses kind of my unique background growing up in this particular neighborhood in San Francisco. Um, and it, I think it also expresses some of the values behind why I chose the extracurricular activities that I did. So I'm, you know, I think I'm okay with that. You know, some people start their personal statements with more of like a traditional hook where you're like in the middle of this action where you're like, the plane was about to land. Um, but what gave my life its professional direction was when my mother's polycystic kidney disease advanced to end-stage renal disease during my time in college. She initially despaired over the burden of being bound to her dialysis machine every night, but over time, her medical team helped her transform her debilitating condition into a practice in self-sufficiency as she mastered home peritoneal dialysis. She grew to engage with her health and the healthcare system on a personal level, from knitting holiday scarves to her for her doctors to cooking our family nutritious farmer's market beets. In the past decade since her diagnosis of ESRD, as I advanced in my medical training at the same time, my expertise in participating in her care has deepened as well, from translating her medical documents into Chinese and advocating for her at family meetings, to explaining her treatment course and helping her make decisions on the momentous day of her transplant. The physicians who we were most grateful to were those whose thorough understanding of her disease course was demonstrated in their guidance and reassurance. I think it is very common for people to write about um, family health situations in their personal statements. And, you know, some people may say that that's overused, um, but, you know, for me, my experiences with my mom going through her health experiences and me being an advocate and part of those experiences 
was like a huge part of something that helped me decide I wanted to go into medicine and internal medicine. And so I think it's okay to share that. Um, and I think I, I I like the examples I have of um, her making the scarves and like cooking. I remember now that she used to do, um, she used to be, yeah. And I think those examples really help make the story maybe a little bit more vivid, I hope. So third paragraph, um, my mother's illness experience informs how I like to navigate my relationships with patients. I found that the kinds of cases I saw on inpatient internal medicine most gave me butterflies of excitement and I remembered most vividly. Um, that seems like it's missing a few words, but okay. Like it, it might not be the grammatically the most correct. One such case was a homeless gentleman in his 50s with terrible uncontrolled diabetes resulting in multiple past episodes of osteomyelitis leading to bilateral below the knee amputations, found to have a recurrence of MSSA bacteremia. Every moment in this diagnostic mystery intrigued me and mattered deeply to the patient and me. Where did this infection come from? Was there a potential source that was overlooked on exam? How would the return of the cultures and diagnostic studies that the patient and I anticipated throughout the day prompt new questions or help us find answers? And what new recommendations would consulting infectious disease experts yield for us? I managed the patient's symptoms of pain and delirium, joked with him about his love for diet Snapple once his mentation cleared and shared every update in the diagnostic workup with him. The intensity of the discussions within our team made me appreciate the intellectual passion in teaching and learning in academic medicine. In the end, no source was found after an extensive evaluation, but the patient felt better after the careful management. I was humbled by this example of the uncertainties in medicine. I still remember this patient, and um, now, you know, thinking, looking at his conditions, this is like a, such a common kind of internal medicine type of um, condition, and I think what I was trying to convey, and I think this works out, is by asking those questions, I was trying to show that like I think, I, I could think like an internal medicine doctor, but also that there was so much like excitement and enthusiasm for learning and, you know, resolving these kind of, these intellectual mysteries. And, um, and also, you know, I talk about everything affecting me and the patients and that we're like a team together. Um, so I think I'm trying to show, you know, just how there was trust and a good therapeutic bond between the patient and me. So yeah, I think that's my paragraph where I explain basically why I chose internal medicine. Because I focused, you know, my second paragraph on my experiences with my mom, um, there wasn't as much room for me to talk about um, other experiences. For example, I could have talked about like my research experiences or other volunteer experiences a little bit more as well. Um, but, you know, those are kind of individual choices that you can make in your personal statement. And then the final paragraph, you know, talking about goals. So I am drawn to becoming a hospitalist or a subspecialist with inpatient responsibilities at an academic hospital by the intellectual fervor of medical teams composed of learners at different stages of learning. So um, that's interesting. I, do, I didn't remember like what exactly I said was my goal at that time. Um, but yeah, I think this is a, a good example of how you can kind of state like what is the setting you're interested in and what are your like kind of general goals. You know, here I kept it still like kind of open, but saying like I'm more interested in inpatient. And my interest in academic medicine stems from my passion for becoming a clinician, educator, and leader who can eventually impart my enthusiasm for the diagnostic puzzle to interdisciplinary teams. This year I am teaching medical students the physical exam and helping to design a quality improvement project regarding communication with patients and inpatient medicine teams. These projects reveal the kind of educational and systems level pursuits I hope to work on as a physician. So I think that is actually good because those are like very typical kind of like med ed and QI projects that um, you know a lot of people tend to do that shows kind of the general direction of um, the career I was aiming for. My experiences advocating for my mother and experiencing the lively intellectual nature of inter internal medicine have led to my love 
for caring for patients and the creative process of teaching and learning as an internist and clinician educator. It's a fine, you know, it's a fine personal statement. I wouldn't say that it's like amazing, but um, I think it kind of represents one way of, of how you can um, explain your values, your experiences, and how you know, they relate to your future goals. So I hope that it's helpful to see specific examples out there. Because um, I know for me, when I saw specific examples of other people's personal statements um, when I was in pre-med, I was like, oh, this helps me so much to know like, generally what you know, an example of one would look like so that I can kind of get over my writer's block a little bit. Yeah, please feel free to ask any questions about what to include, what not to include, what's a good anecdote to share in your personal statements, you know, in the comments below. Thank you so much.